something called the moment of truth in our show. Every moment for me is a moment <laughs> of truth. <laughs> but this one is a little bit intense because you cannot think. The first thought in your mind, you just have to speak it out. Some questions are crazy, some I'm questions are insane, but you <laughs> cannot skip. And right. to any questions that you think you don't want to answer, you cannot just say breast and skip. Breast. <laughs> you okay. cannot do that. All right. <laughs> it's now time for the moment of truth here with Milind. Are you ready? Yeah. You seem to be very calm and relaxed. Is that a question? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, we start off with you. Do you prefer stage or screen? Screen. I've never done stage except for modeling. Modeling, I and meant. And stage is very frightening. Oh, really? Yeah. No, but then if it's between uh, fashion modeling and screen, obviously screen because it has much more depth. There's so many more things to learn more things to experience, more things to do. But don't you think stage is you go and perform, you have no second chances? Isn't that more thrilling? That's the scary part. Oh, okay. Oh <laughs> what is one thing that you miss about being 25? Uh, the stupidity. The stupidity? <laughs> hmm. Because I just think that as you grow older, now of course people talk about physically you become weaker and so on, so that's not happened to me. I feel fitter than I was when I was 25, even though I was a national champion in swimming then. But I think uh, mentally and emotionally, you become just so much more uh, wiser. You know? mm -hmm. So there's just uh, so much more stable and settled that you really see so many things that you missed when you were 25 and you can enjoy them so much more. I think it's a fantastic space to be in. All right. What's the strangest thing you have done to prepare for a role? I don't really do much preparation. I. Um, I go by what the director wants and the director's brief. I haven't actually done a role where I've had to put on a lot of weight or lose a lot of weight or, or shave, your shave head. my head. In <laughs> fact, I did a film last year called Bajira Mastani. Uh -huh. And uh, in the film, I'm bald. But now the makeup has improved to such an extent that I just had to wear a bald cap. And the makeup, it was fantastic. You cannot tell mm -hmm. that uh, I had hair like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm completely bald in the film. Mm -hmm. So I, I never had to do anything like that much. I had to go by the character. In fact, people ask me, they said, oh, you played a doctor, so did you study what doctors do? I said, all doctors do whatever they do. Who the doctor is is important. The mm -hmm. character and personality of that particular doctor. And I can't study anybody for that. I have to be that person. Mm -hmm. you know, so all right, next question. First time you went topless for the camera, when was it, how was it? Um, I had done a lot of uh, nude photography. Um, but the first time? The first time, okay, the first time I think there is a park in Delhi called the Lodi Garden. Mm -hmm. It's a very big park, it's a beautiful park. And uh, a friend of mine, Bharat Sikka, mm. great photographer, he uh, said, and, and a designer, his name was Sunit Varma, is Sunit Varma, and I don't know whose idea it was, we said, <laughs> let's do a nude shoot in Lodi Garden. In the park? So <laughs> I was naked, not even shoes, and I was walking around in the park. And I could hear people, but they couldn't see me because there are trees and bushes and so on. <laughs> so I'm walking around in the park, and this guy was walking around taking pictures of me. <gasps> that was my first shoot. It wasn't topless. It was everything less. <laughs> everything, everything less. Everything less. And it was great. I mean, the pictures were beautiful. It was like I'm a wild person, you know, in a very amazingly beautiful environment, just walking around without a care. Uh -huh. It was lovely. Uh, of course, the most, uh, I would say, uh, the picture that people noticed the most was the ad that I did, which was also naked, with my girlfriend at that time, Madhu mm -hmm. Satre, and mm -hmm. a snake. Mm -hmm. And that was also wearing nothing except shoes. Except shoes. Except. And All that right. was a beautiful picture also. I'm sure. Yeah. Ever dated a fan? Oh, yes. Many, many oh, times? Yes. <laughs> Not many, many times, but, uh, but I have. Yeah, it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Well, sh my, my last uh, girlfriend, w we were in a relationship for more than three years, uh, is an actress. Uh, people know her. Her name is Shahana uh, Goswami. Wonderful, wonderful actress. And she first wrote to me a fan letter when she was 14 or 15. Oh, my God. Yes. So sh now she must be 29 or 28. Uh -huh. you know? And so she's, I don't know how many years younger than me. But when she was 14, she wrote to me the first letter, and, and she was living in Calcutta at that time. When she came to Bombay to be an actress, I think at the age of 21 or 22, that's when we actually met, and uh, I just got divorced. Mm -hmm. And we hit it off uh, really well and started dating. Mm -hmm. so, ah, interesting. Yeah. What's the best thing about being one of the top models in India? 
you get everything you want by clicking your fingers. Oh, well, is I mean, that how it is? I mean, that's famous people, you know, somebody's people see you on TV, and they really, f what happens is, or they see you on screen, and they, they feel that they know you. You know how it is. Mm. And so whatever you want, you, you just have to ask for it, and it's done. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really, I don't deserve it at all, but it's a wonderful privilege. Wow. What is the biggest illusion people have when they look at celebrities? What do you think that it is? That they know them. That's what that is the illusion. Yeah. All right. The type of girl you find extremely sexy. Um, somebody who you could either make or break a lot of hearts right now. <laughs> but most girls today are like that. They really have an idea of what they want to be and what mm -hmm. they want to do. It's no longer about just getting married and, uh, and sitting at home, which is also a wonderful thing. But there are a lot of girls who want to go out and change the world. Mm -hmm. And that is something that, that I love. Not only in girls, but in everybody. Everybody who wants to go out and, and do something. I love that quality. Mm -hmm. One trait about men in general that you don't personally like. In men? In men. A trait. It's very common. Procrastination. I wouldn't Is say it it's just in men. men yeah, I wouldn't it's say it's humans. in men. It's people. <laughs> yeah, it, it's terrible. It's the worst thing that anybody can do and worse for them uh, as well. But in men, I would say uh, globally, again, because we live in a patriarchal society, mm -hmm. men are really pampered you mm -hmm. know, by the women in their lives, right from their mothers to, to everybody else. And they grow up with that sense of privilege, which sometimes can be very, very irritating, mm -hmm. especially when you see the way they treat the women in their lives. That's, it's not nice. And the women take it. Mm -hmm. which is worse. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it kind of feeds on each other. The men are taught to behave like that, the women are taught to accept it, and it kind of it creates a vicious cycle. It goes on yeah. like that, sad. But true. A piece of material you can never get enough of indulging. Material? A piece of material that you just indulge in so much. You just like splurge on it, splurge on it. Like something to eat? Any kind of material that you um. literally splurge on and you indulge yourself to. I like to eat cream. <laughs> I love cream. How do you keep that in balance? Because you're a fitness freak too. Do you burn that well out? Well, the thing <laughs> is, see, burning is one thing. People talk a lot about calories, but it's not really about calories. It's about metabolism. Mm -hmm. So your body actually has a consciousness that is far superior to your thinking mind. You know? So when the body understands what it has to do with the food, which only happens through an active lifestyle, the moment you become sedentary, your body loses that ability to understand what to do with the food that you're eating. That's why diseases happen. So the moment you eat the food, if you have an active lifestyle, the body will say, OK, I need to get rid of this, excrete it, or I need to use it for your hair, or put some in the liver, and put some in the stomach, create uh, different mm -hmm. cells, and so on. So it's not fat that makes you fat. It's a sedentary lifestyle that makes you fat, or refined food that makes you fat. So refined sugar, refined flour, anything that's refined and packaged and processed will make you fat if you lead a sedentary lifestyle. Mm -hmm. All right. A dream in Bollywood that didn't make it in reality. I actually, I, ha I never had dreams uh, in Bollywood or, or as an actor. I mean, I've worked, in fact, in many, many other countries. I've, I've done Japanese, uh, Swedish, German, French co-productions, Hindi, Marathi, uh, Telugu, Tamil, you know, so many different languages, English. Mm -hmm. But I, again, I started acting quite by chance. I never saw myself as an actor or saw so, so acting as something that I wanted to do. Um, a friend of mine approached me with a television. The first movie I signed, and you may have uh, heard of it or seen it, is, was called Joji Tawahi Sikandar. Yes. A very famous movie. I think it was Amir's f second film, Amir Khan. And uh, the first shoot that I did, which was for Rohit Bal, was seen by Mansoor Khan, who was the director of Karamat uh, Se Karamat Tak and Joji, Joji Tawahi Sikandar. And he called me and he said, you know, I want to play a role in my film. And I said, acting... You know, <laughs> not really, but I've seen Kayamat Se Kayamat Tak, and I saw what he made out of a really hackneyed subject. He made a beautiful film. And I said, okay, if I'm going to do something in film, let me work with Mansoor Khan. So I assigned the movie. I didn't complete it because we had differences, and then my role was finally done by Deepak Tijori. Um, but I had, a, I had an interesting experience. This was in 1990, so I just actually started modeling, 89 or 90. I went back to what I was doing. In 1995, a friend of mine, Devika Bhojwani, she said, you know, we're doing a television serial, India's first television serial in English, mm -hmm. called A Mouthful of Sky. We know you're uncomfortable in Hindi, and you know, why don't you do this? It, it'll be easy. So I said, okay, she was a friend of mine. I said, fine. I did it, and it was great fun. More than the acting itself, I enjoyed the production, you know, mm -hmm. how the serial actually came about. 
So I started my own production company, mm -hmm. which I still have today. And we do a lot of non-fiction uh, uh, programming for television. Mm -hmm. So that's how, how I started. I never thought that I wanted to be. So, so it just kind even of today, laid out. Yeah. Uh, even right fr since then, I do one project or two projects in a year. Even now, like I just had a Marathi film that was released a couple of months ago. I just finished shooting for a Hindi film called Chef with Saif Ali Khan. I know it's a little confusing. And last year, I had this film called uh, Baji Ramastani. So I do films once in a while. And I like it that way because it's still exciting for me then. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I love acting, but I can't be a full-time actor. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like to work on the ground, meet people, interact, have new experiences. And you can't do that if you're, if you're a full-time actor. So you do full -time it for the experience, can't even go out not and walk the, on the street. Oh, wow. Yeah, they can't. Can you walk on the street? I can, I can, yes, especially if I look like this. <laughs> the moment, the moment I, I don't quite believe that. <laughs> yeah, but it's much better now. It's, it's better now that I'm not, say, at the level of, say, Shah Rukh Khan or Amir Khan or all of them. Uh, in fact, I started my career at the same time. But uh, I'm at a level where I can still do whatever I want. And still feel human. Exactly. Absolutely. That I can, I'm in touch with reality. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I became a full-time actor, I would not be. Mm -hmm. A bitter experience that positively shaped you as a person. A bitter experience. Um, well, my, my whole philosophy about experience is just that, that it's never uh, a bad experience if you learn from it. So every experience has the potential to be positive. And if you talk about a bitter exp something that really bad that happened to me was when I was not allowed to represent India. In fact, that was the only time I represented India in swimming was at the S South Asian Federation Games in 84. After that, I was not allowed, even though I was still national champion until 1988. So that was something that was, it was terrible as an experience for me because I'd been preparing from the age of 9 to 23. And that was something I would have really loved to do, to maybe represent India at the Asian Games or at the Olympics and so on. But I, th I, I think I was just able to move on from there uh, very, very easily. I still feel it. That's probably the only thing that I say I wish this had happened. Mm -hmm. But I'm emotionally comfortable with it now. Perfect. So, Your favorite place to hang out in Mumbai? Um, at home, if I'm in Bombay, because I'm mostly there 10 days a month, 20 days I'm traveling. I love to be at home with my cat and my mother. <laughs> or there is another place. I have a house in Lunavla. It's a hill station just yeah. outside Bombay. And I built it myself. And it's, it's like a shack, but it over overlooks this beautiful valley. And it's a great place to just be there on your own and feel amazing. Mm -hmm. Two things you like about Nepal? Oh, the mountains. I love the mountains. You're in the and perfect the time, you yes, can see mountains from yes, Kathmandu yes, Valley. Yes. And the people. I, I, re I really love the people. Not that I've met a lot of Nepali people in Nepal, but I've met a lot of Nepali people in India. Mm -hmm. And they're really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful people. Perfect. Now, I will say a few words, yes. which are what in What happened to your uh, rapid fire thingy? Well, it was a rapid fire, you know, but then I, I let you much. speak. Yes, you do <laughs> talk too much. Yeah. All I right. Uh, what do you think the meaning of these words are? Yeah. These are all Nepali words. Oh. You have to guess. Now, okay. a little bit of exercise to the brain. Uh. All right. Uttaulo. What do you think that means? Uttaulo. It means excited. Oh, wow. <laughs> what does it mean? It is. <laughs> you, well, you have to congratulate me for that. That's amazing. I was in shock. <laughs> All but right. In fact, there's a similar word in <coughs> in in, in, uh, in India. I forgot which language it's in. It's uh, utavla. Utavla. Is that yes. Hindi? Uh, utavla. Yes, I utavla think. Utavla. Yes. Hun. I think it's yeah, Hindi. Yeah, it is Hindi. So it, it is, is similar, Hindi. Yeah, because similar. we have a lot of similarities. Course, no, there course. are a lot of words yes, that absolutely. we actually exchange. All right. Tatta. Is to make fun of somebody. Make a joke. Really? Yeah, actually, yes. That's a Marathi word. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go. Kurkucha. Oops. It's not a kukri. <laughs> it's not. Kurkucha. Uh, kurkucha. Is it something to eat? Uh, <laughs> all right. That's one guess. One guess. Kurkucha. I give you one more guess. Kurkucha. <laughs> no, no, I can't. Something to eat. No, it's your ankle. In oh, Nepali. oh, oh that, <laughs> that, that, that's to eat. tough. That's tough. Yes. You All can right. eat somebody's ankle if you were so inclined that way. Yeah. Yes. Jushli mm -hmm. kira. Oh, please. It's an insect. It's an insect. It's an insect, but no, 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 no. Come no. on. It's uh, no, it's because kira, the, come on. Come on. Kira is the kira, word. Yeah, but then the, the tricky part is jusli. What do you think it is? Jusli. Jusli. Jusli kira. <laughs> it's not a cockroach. <gasps> come on. You cannot take. That long. Is it a bed bug? Fire. No, it's not a bed bug. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's a caterpillar. Oh, okay. All right. Caterpillar. Last word. Mm. Chipliti. 
chip leti something to eat <laughs> no it's <laughs> nothing to eat <laughs> chip leti um some animal some animal no it's a slide a slide a, oh, slide. a slide is called oh, chip leti nice. all right uh, we still have a little more mm -hmm. but this is more of a brain exercise so nikesh if you could pass me those two tennis balls any idea what we're going to do? But I was good with the words, right? Yeah, you got three out of mm. six, right? 50%. It's very impressive. 50%. All right, Nikesh, you have to be a little quick. Run, run, run. So you're going to give me two balls. What do you think I'm going to make you do with this? Balance them in some way. Balance them? Awesome. Yeah, what? All right, these are yours. Okay. So can you juggle them? No. Yes, you can. Oh, you mean you want me to try? Yeah, you can do that, right? Oh my God. Nikesh, can I have the ball back? You yeah, can just throw it in. Me to run around, yeah. I just hope this does not get dangerous and no one gets hurt. So what do you want me to do now? While I'm juggling them? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. All right. So while you juggle, you cannot stop. I will have a few lines of Nepali songs recited and you will have to say it along without stopping. Okay. We can try that? Yeah, are you ready? Are you start? Okay. Is this juggling? Sorry, yes. start again, start again. Rissam Firiri. Rissam Firiri. Rissam Firiri. Udi Razam Ki Dada Ma Ponja. Rissam Firiri. Can't stop, can't stop. I'm not stopping. Nira Zaili Rissam Ni. Nira Zaili Rissam Ni. You have to stop after I sing it. Oh, sorry, sorry. All right. Nira Zaili Rissam Ni. Nira Jaisi Rissam Ni. Nira Zaili Rissam Ni. Antwani Rissam Ni. Nira Kaili Hola Maya Sangha Maya Milao Ni. Really? Yeah, Nira something in the Himalayas. <laughs> All right. Uka Lima. Uka Lima. Ogi Ogi. Ogi Ogi. Ora Lima Pochi Pochi. Ora Lima Pochi Pochi. Yoke Take Bako. Yoke Take Bako. Oh, not bad. Not bad. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> One last. One bistare, bistare. Bistare, bistare. Dubde Sutimro. Dubde Sutimro. Wait, you're not doing Wait, it, not it well. well. We do it again. We do it again. Bistare, bistare. Dubde Sutimro. Bistare, Timro. Maya Ko Sagar Maya Ko Sagar Na. Dukha Asu Sabai Birsira. Ram Raksa. Ram Raksa. You're doing a good job. All right, wait on. All right, now you do it. I'll I'll tell you a song in Marathi. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah. See, come on. You don't get to do this. You're on my show. Your fans, they will love you. We're running out of time, and quick, I have a few quick, more quick, questions. Quick, quick. All right. Popta popta. Popta popta. Boltos gold. Boltos gold. Sorun khatos peri. Sorun khatos parvalam rao. Not bad.